Few people understand the Vatican better than John Allen, a senior correspondent for the National Catholic Reporter based in Rome. When Pope Benedict announced his resignation, John started doing his homework on the cardinals who will most likely be considered for the job. This is Habemus Papabili. Luis Antonio Tagle, one of the youngest cardinals, 55 years old, Filipino, currently the Archbishop of Manila. What do we need to know about Luis Antonio Tagle? Well, I would say if the key voting issue in this conclave is the desire to find an evangelizer, that is, you know, somebody who can really sort of set people on fire with enthusiasm for the faith, uh, and if they want that evangelizer to come from outside the West, by a pretty short path, that leads you to Luis Antonio Chito uh, Tagli, Chito is his nickname. You know, this guy is a superstar of the Catholic Church in Asia. I mean, by some order of magnitude, you know, he would be seen as the most charismatic, uh, the most exciting, the most dynamic, the most attractive sort of face and voice for Asian Catholicism. And he does this, he doesn't have that kind of swashbuckling bravado that you associate with John Paul II. It's a much quieter, simpler, humbler sort of approach, quintessentially Asian in some ways, but it works. You know, he has a wildly popular TV and radio program in the Philippines. You know, I've seen him give speeches at Eucharistic Congresses and other Catholic venues around the world, and there's not a dry eye in the house. I mean, the guy is just phenomenal. Uh, in addition to all that, he comes with real intellectual chops as well. I mean, you're talking about a guy who wrote uh, his doctoral dissertation in church history at the Catholic University of America under Joseph Kamanchak, kind of the dean of American church historians contributed to the Al Alberigo and Maloney history of the Second Vatican Council, was a member of the editorial board there. Uh, so he blends real intellectual depth with real popular appeal. There seems to be, in the images that we've seen of him with Pope Benedict now, Pope, Pope Emeritus, a real connection. Uh, they were both on the International Theological Commission. Talk a little bit about that. Is that significant in some way? Well, a cute story there. I mean, Tagli is only 55, and he looks like he's about 15. Uh, and the story goes that when he was first appointed to the International Theological Commission, uh, then Cardinal Ratzinger was introducing the new members of the team to Pope John Paul II. And when he introduced Tagli, he turns to John Paul and says, don't worry, he's had his confirmation, you know, precisely because he comes off as so youthful. But yeah, I think there is a connection uh, there. Well, another thing we probably ought to say about Tagli, and I think part of his appeal, uh, is that he has a reputation for being an extraordinarily simple man of the people. I mean, there are all kinds of stories. I interviewed a, uh, a woman in his former diocese in the Philippines when he was named to Manila. Uh, who told me a story about how in his former diocese there was a kind of town square in front of the cathedral and he was legendary for inviting people in that square in to have lunch with him and so forth. This woman told me the story that one day she had a husband who was a drunk who liked to sleep it off in this square and so usually in the middle of the afternoon she would go looking for him and this particular afternoon she couldn't find him, killed a couple of hours cruising bars to see if she could round him up. Finally somebody said, oh no, he's in with the bishop. Uh, Togli had brought him in and sort of given him some coffee to sober him up and given him some food and was just sitting with him and talking. You know, he, he also is famous for taking the bus to work, uh, for riding around town on his bike. I mean, and then he, he, not only is that his personality, but he's also able to give that a kind of evangelical and theological logic. At the Synod for Bishops on the New Evangelization last year, of the hundreds and hundreds of speeches that are given during these things, his was probably one of the two or three that people actually remembered, because what he said is that if we are going to evangelize successfully in the 21st century, we need three qualities. We need a church that is humbler, a church that is simpler, and a church that has a more developed capacity for silence. Uh, I think that left a very deep impression on the people in that hall. He's one of the youngest cardinals, as I mentioned. How significant is that question of age when you're looking at the candidates for the next pope? Well, I mean, you know, traditionally, uh, the cardinals are trying to split the difference between somebody who is too young so they'd have an overly long papacy and somebody who is too old so they'd have an overly short papacy. So usually the conventional wisdom is they're looking for somebody in their mid-60s or so. <clears throat> Togli obviously is not in that window, and I do think that would be a question mark. On the other hand, you know, now that the precedent has been set that a pope can resign, it's no longer unthinkable. Uh, you know, I think some cardinals might say, well, you know, he could give us 10 or 15 years uh, and then step off the stage uh, and make room for someone else. So I think that may have upset the apple cart, so to speak, in the previous conventional wisdom about age as a deterrent. What about pastoral experience? Being relatively young, 
in the college. Uh, he doesn't have some of the pastoral experience, the length of pastoral experience that some of these guys do. Is that a question mark? I think there are two great question marks about Togli and, and probably why he's got to be considered a long shot. Uh, one, as you say, uh, although he now runs a very, very complex archdiocese in Manila, he hasn't been there very long. Uh, and so there would be some question about, to, you know, has he had the, the necessary seasoning? I mean, I think a lot of guys might be inclined to look at him and say, he'd be a great pope, but not yet. Uh, and I think the other big knock uh, is that it seems clear to me and to most observers that governance uh, is a very important issue heading into this conclave, particularly the ability to get the Vatican bureaucracy under control. I'm not sure a guy who would need a guided tour of the Apostolic Palace necessarily is going to strike a number of cardinals as the obvious choice to lead that reform. What do you think the reaction of the world would be, though, if he walked out on the balcony? If Cardinal Togli walks out onto that balcony as the next pope, I think the day one headlines is the Catholic Church has got a rock star. You know, I mean, there would just be, first of all, the images of, from Manila, I mean, you would think the Philippines had just won the World Cup, okay, in terms of the eruption of, of enthusiasm you would see there. And of course, as we know, given the Philippine diaspora all over the world these days, there would be parties in the streets of Saudi Arabia, there would be parties in the streets of Rome. You know, Toronto, I mean, you know, all around the map. Uh, and, and further, I just think those early images of, of this short, beaming, simple, and yet deeply intelligent and deeply articulate Asian man would take the world by storm. Thanks a lot, John. Sure.